Hello, so today we're going to be looking at an 820-2530 board that does not uh, turn on and yet no green light on the charger. I'm going to have to keep this quick because, as I said, uh, my lead technician is still out on surgical leave, which means I have to do his job plus mine. And I'm also taking this class on the weekends, which means that I have no free time, I have no rest time. So as you can see, I plug it in, there's no green light. And I'm just going to go through the troubleshooting process uh, with you here a little quickly because, again, no free time. So, not going to go through opening up the schematics. I've done this a million times already. If you want to see troubleshooting from beginning to end, you're welcome to view videos that I've done in the past or I use the schematics and I show you what I'm doing. So, I have PP Bus G3 Hot, which is a 12.6 volt rail. Let's see if we have the 5 and the 3 volt rails here. So, all right, three volt rail, but no green light. Now I've talked about the one wire circuit 50 million times, so I am not going to get into how that works. I'm not gonna explain how it works or how it keeps the machine from turning on. What I will do very, very quickly is show you what it is that's 99% likelihood wrong with this motherboard. Let me just open up the screen capture software so that I can show you exactly what that is here. So what I'm going to be showing you here, as soon as I open up this, is a chip that is very often the problem. Not a chip, but a power line to a chip that goes bad very often in the cases of liquid damage. And again, I'm not going to explain everything here because I have videos on the one-wire circuit. You can freely search for the one-wire circuit, and you'll see where I've discussed it in these videos. You, it doesn't need to be discussed 50 million times as if it's from scratch every single time I decide to go ahead and do a video. Uh, but... All right, so we shrink me because who the hell wants to see me when you can see the beautiful schematics. Uh, okay, so long story short, once my PDF reader decides to uh, read something, here we go. Long story short, so the adapt, this is the DC in board, right? MagSafe DC power jack, adapter sense, talks to this chip. This then allows the adapter to communicate with the SMC via the system manager controller via the Sys1 wire line. This chip, See the VCC tab? VCC or VDD, anything like that, that is the power that the chip is using. So that's the power that the chip is using to actually turn on so that you can, you know, so, you can, so it can work. So when you see VCC or VDD, that's going to be the main power line for a chip that is powering it and allowing it to turn on. So this is turning on off of what comes from here. This over here is a logic gate. This is not going to turn on and send PP3V42 G3 hot through here if SMC BCA cock is not here. Now, what happens all the time is that this, this is a very, very small, very, very small via right by the edge of the board. It always, always dies. So I will show you that here. And when I say always dies, because it's close to the, um, it's close to, is this thing? This is in reverse, isn't it? Orange, you're upside down. Come on, mofo. Come on. There we go. All right, so what I mean is since it's close to the edge of the board, that's where the water damage occurs, and that's where the problems arise. So I showed you that I have PP3V42 underscore G3 hot, right? But over here, where I'm supposed to, so this over here is pin 5 of U6901. So let's just switch back real quick. So U6901 over here, where, come on, PDF reader. This PDF reader is not acting like it has two SSDs in RAID 0. All right, so this over here, PP3V42 underscore G3 hot, is supposed to be on pin 5. So watch what happens if I try to measure for pin 5. Let's see what I get. So if I try to measure that, I'm probably going to get something like 0, even though my PP3V42 underscore G3 hot power supply is just fine. So when I measure over there, I get zero instead of 3.42 volts. So what I have to do now is I have to find where I can get 3.42 volts on this board and then steal 3.42 volts so I can send it over to that leg of the chip. And that's gonna be the fun part. So right next to it, I have a leg from this other chip, which is, let's see what I get here. 
Well, I can't see the multimeter because I faced it towards you. I have to put the camera up so I can see that. Okay, so I have nothing there because I actually unplugged the board from the charger. This is what happens when you rush because you have a bunch of stuff to do and somebody is out sick. So anyway, I'll just measure this here again just for the hell of it because I... Okay, so it's 0 0.09 volts. Needless to say, that ain't what we need. So if I go over next door, I can steal PP3V42 from this, which is cool. Yeah, so that has PP3V3 on there and PP3V42. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a little wire from one to the other, and that is why Apple calls this the one-wire circuit, because when it fucks up, you can always fix it using just one wire. So, now I taught somebody how to do board repair from scratch, from not ever having done it, and he is much better than I am at, at doing a, a better trick. So what he does, I'll show you under the microscope. Let me just turn the light a little down so that you can see. So let me show you what he usually does which I always fail at. So this is where the 3.42 volts is supposed to come in, right? It comes in through here, and this actually goes through the board right there. So what he will do is he will simply grab it from the other side by making a hole in the board. So that hole will go, I th yeah, like right over here. So he will simply make a hole in the board and have that hole go all the way through the board. You can see where I, I tried to make a hole so that I could put a wire through there, and I failed miserably. So, and he's always able to do that. He's much better, at, much better at the arts and crafts kind of shit than I am. I suck at it. So since I suck at it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be running a wire from here to here. Again, the right thing to do would just be to make the hole and, and recreate the, the blown via. That would be the right thing to do. But since I suck at that, and you all can laugh and make fun and say, I can't believe you're teaching the class on this. I can't believe you want to teach mother board repair when you can't even fix a via. Well, you know, if that's what you're thinking, you, you can all go fuck yourselves. Um, so this over here, I'm going to take a wire and run it from there to there. And this is all probably going to work happily ever after. So let's turn on my soldering iron. Let's put the proper tip to do this on my soldering iron. And yeah, shut the fuck up. Oh. I have this Hacko FX951 that beeps every time you change the tip. Whoever at Hacko decided to make it make that loud, annoying beep when you change tips, like, I, I really, I would, I would love to meet that person. <laughs> I, I would love to. I would love to give them a piece of my mind. But, so we're going to put a little bit of flux over here. A little bit of flux over here. Okay, we're going to take my air filter and put it over here. Because as I've said many times, I don't want to get cancer. Some solder right there. Alrighty. Get it nice and get this here nice and juiced up. Alrighty, now we get the cutters. And my little piece of wire. Your little piece of wire, where'd you go? Ah. And the tweezers that I just put down, here we go. The wire that I cut was too short. Gotta make a bigger one, bigger one. You can always make a long wire shorter, but you can't make a shorter wire longer. 
which is why it's good to just cut a bigger piece and then shorten it to the length that you would like it to be just by twisting it. That's what I like to do. I never put the nasty liquid in there, veneer. The ultrasonic cleaning stuff? No, I forgot. That's just plain water right now. I'm sorry. I hate this part of the job. This is the worst. Running jumpers is the worst. This is maddening. I'm not pulling on this directly. I'm moving it back and forth. I'm not pulling on the joint, but right in front of the joint, you're going to see where it's really becoming unstable because I'm pulling it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And eventually it's going to cut itself to the perfect length. So that is my 100% professional method for, for shortening my wire. And there we go. Obviously I have to coat that. I'm not going to leave that wire exposed. That would be, that would, that would seriously be unprofessional. So that I'm not going to do. But what I am going to do is I'm going to plug it in to show you that the green light works. Fan spins. Yep, so this is a common problem with these boards, with the older 2009, 2010 ones, because they have that, they have that, uh, that one wire circuitry right on the edge there. And the other thing to think about here is on the newer boards, that's not on the edge. The one wire circuit is not on that specific edge, but what is, is current sensing circuitry and also voltage sense circuitry for the machine. So if you have liquid in that area on the newer machines, what's going to be very common is that it's running very slow and that it's, it's, you know, just when it's running off of the battery, it's unbearably slow. So that is an area to check. That's a common issue on the A202530, A202879 board which honestly is so old at this point that they kind of belong in the trash can. I mean, this, this is Core 2 Duo. I mean, you know, the, like this has a video chip on it that gets boiling hot and the very nice cool CPU in the two-year-old laptop that I have has a better video on it than this boiling discrete video chip just because it's so old. But it was decent when it came out. But now, like, this, this kind of really belongs, you know. But somebody wanted to fix it. And somebody wanted to pay, so I'll fix it. So that's a common one-wire circuit issue. It's called the one-wire circuit by Apple because you can always fix it by just using one wire. And that's that.